Cool. Yeah. Well, okay. Getting people, unleashing a virus that can be spread works for marketing. Why can't it work for our students? Why can't we implant into our students' heads some cool idea that's going to help make them more effective learners? Okay, so <clears throat> here's one of those ideas. Students, communication is the big goal of your study. <clears throat> the ability to communicate. Use English to communicate, to interact with people. That's the goal. Why share this information? Students get very caught up, as you know. I've got to memorize more vocabulary. I have to be more grammatically correct. I have to do pronunciation. I have to memorize all of these things. And I think that a lot of our students, although all of, all of these things are very important, they form you know, the basics of what our students will be able to uh, able to know so that they can use the language effectively. But what's the big picture? I mean, are we, are we you know, failing to see the forest for the trees? Well, perhaps that's the idea. So I've been working with some students to try to figure out what is it that they want and remind them that, well, if this is what you want, all this that you're doing here about grammar and and vocabulary study is the way there. What was that thing that I, uh, I was talking with Curtis earlier today? I said, uh, um, getting there is half the fun. You ever heard that expression? Getting there is half the fun when you're traveling, right? So the adventure, uh, just the act of traveling there is um, half the fun? Actually, I think that you know, when you're studying English, I probably it's the case that uh, about 60 or 75 percent of the fun is getting to the goal. But as I said, students sometimes miss that goal. All right, I want to jump into a. There we go. I want to show you a uh, video of a couple of my students here. This is Hot or Not on the left, and Rie on the right. They're talking about summer vacation. What did you do for your summer vacation? Haruna asks Rie, Rie answers. Rie says, hey Haruna, how about you? What did you do for summer vacation? And she answers too. Now, what I'd like for you to do is, while you're watching this, you don't have to take any notes and write, say, or check any boxes or anything like that saying, um, oh, this student, uh, she went to Sydney or whatever. Don't worry about that. Instead, please enjoy the conversation and notice the way that they're interacting with each other. So how was your summer vacation? It was great. great. Yes, I was in California. California? Mm -hmm. wow. It was so much fun. <laughs> I'm trying to control the volume here. Jessica, can I, can I get some assistance here on the uh, volume thing? Well, oh, this is too high tech for me. <laughs> I've never used a computer before. <laughs> oh, I could have done that. <laughs> I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. I'm probably good now. Thank you very much. Yes, that's right. Definitely. Okay, let's forget all that. And are you ready to watch a video? Yeah. All right, let's watch. Here we go. So how was your summer vacation? It was great. great. Yes, I was in California. California? Mm -hmm. Wow. It was so much fun. <laughs> um, I was helping kids. Helping kids? Mm -hmm. But they went there to... Did you see some people before? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this girl over here is going to be talking about the scuba diving, and this girl over here is talking about the uh, trip to California that she made. As I said before, it's the audio that matters the most. Please take a listen to the conversation and notice the way that they're interacting with each other. I 
I beg your pardon? That's if it's proven in your case. Well, I'll tell you what, in the meantime, why don't I carry on? We'll come back to that. So, how was your summer vacation? It was great. great. Yes, I was in California. California? Mm -hmm. Wow. It was so much fun. What did you do there? Um, I was helping kids. Helping kids? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, they went there to study English. Oh, and cool. experience mm -hmm. American culture. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I was their leader. Leader? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool, thank you. <laughs> and I went to the beach with them. The beach? In shopping center. Mm -hmm. And when they have any trouble with Miss mm -hmm. like, Hospital, yes. Yeah, English. Mm -hmm. so I helped them. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what, what did you do? Oh, I went to Australia. Oh, great. Great barrier. Uh -huh. And I also went to the beach shopping. Oh, really? And yeah, there I tried scuba diving. Oh. It was my first time. Really? It was so good. Oh, really? Were you nervous? Yeah. First, you know, it was my first time. Mm -hmm. so it, yeah. was, it was hard to breathe. Oh, really? Is that difficult? Yes. The dating sign. Um. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Who did you go with? All right, audio is okay, not too loud. All right. You got one person, Hanada on the left, she's talking about scuba diving, and of course you could hear her pantomime, right? <laughs> and the other person is, uh, Rie is talking about, uh, she went to California, right? Um, what did you notice about uh, the way that they interacted with each other? Uh, one of them echoed, so that they were sort of saying about something or other, and she would use those words. And the other one was, this other second one was helping out the other person by saying, really? And trying to get more information from the from that person. Okay, all right. Um, would you, what was the function of that, I wonder? Is it helping out? Or is it just, you know, pleasantly reacting and being friendly? Yeah. It's a lot of it, uh, when you go back and forth, some of it is slang, like, you know, really? You know, uh -huh. they, they talk like that in America. Uh -huh. A lot of slang. Uh, they don't talk like that anywhere else? Well. <laughs> I mean, I'm American. I know how it is. But the, crazy. the custom is, when you go back and forth, you use a lot of slang. Yeah. But is oh really and yeah and awesome and is that all just slang? Yeah. Did you catch that? The uh, the girl when uh, when Rie is talking about California, Potter is over here. She's uh, shadowing. She's repeating quite a bit. You know. Um, I said when I when I asked them to do this video, I said interact with each other. Do, do whatever it is that you like to do to uh, interact and show interaction with each other. And Hanada's big thing is, hey, I like to, you know, chat, I like to repeat. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Anything else? There's actually um, quite a bit going on here. Um, the conversation is not just one of those catch ball conversations. You know, um, I think that when students in junior high school or elementary school are first memorizing dialogues, that's what they get. Where did you go? I went to California. Did you enjoy yourself or did you have fun? Yes, I did. Who did you go with? You know, what time was the plane? You know, and that sort of thing. But actually what we've got here is quite a bit of interaction between two people. We've got repeating. We've got uh, prefabricated phrases that students are using. Um, let's take a look at uh, uh, the conversation strategy um, kind of description here. Um, what are conversation strategies? Conversation strategies are useful lexical phrases and behaviors. Now they're different from straight out vocabulary. And they don't quite qualify as grammar structures. 
Um, well, I mean, one of the things about the phrase, oh really, is that it's topic free. It's something that can be recycled over and over and over again. Um, it is possible, of course, to do a little too much shadowing in a conversation. It is possible to, uh, of course, say, oh really, oh really, oh really, you know, too many times in one conversation and it makes your partner crazy. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and so one of the things, one of the things that I hope that we'll tell our students is here's, here's a variety of small phrases that you can throw in there. Please, you know, kind of pick and choose and go around. If, it's, if everything is uh-huh, 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 you know, it sounds pretty robotic, okay? Um, one, one thing that I've uh, discovered in my reading um, is that uh, these, little, these little bits of language are known in, in various academic circles, people who study uh, discourse analysis and conversation strategy. They're known as discourse markers. Uh, they're known as uh, fillers. Um, Marianne Overstreet at University of Hawaii did a, a, a book a few years ago called uh, Whales, Candlelight, and Stuff Like That. <laughs> and she made an excellent case for the, the idea that, and stuff like that is not just sloppy speech. And stuff like that has a very definite function. One of those functions is, well, I went to the beach and I went to this and yeah, stuff like that means I can shut up now because you get the idea, don't you? Yeah, I get the idea. Right. So, you know, this is one of those things that, and, and when I teach my students and stuff like that, I say, this is for conversation, by the way. Please don't write in your essays, okay? You know, I'm worried about nuclear radiation and stuff like that. You know, just, does, doesn't sound very cool, all right? Your teacher's going to come and yell at me. And that's the last thing that I need, right? So um, these useful lexical phrases and behaviors, I say behaviors because um, you can't say that shadowing or repeating is actually a phrase. It's a behavior. Um, they're topic-free. They're recyclable. You can get students to use them over and over again. They consist of prefabricated chunks of language which I'll show you some examples of. Uh, some of them are generative. For example, um, the phrase, it sounds like blah, 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 blah. You have to, that's what they call that, that endurant of Carico uh, from Lexical Phrases book uh, 15 years ago, uh, call that a sentence head. Um, what I've discovered is that uh, students who are really good at speaking English were really more interactive than other students. That, I mean, plain and simple, for, for, for many years I've been recording video conversations like this one. Scares the heck out of the students. Keeps them on task, you know? But, 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 but it's been very instructive because I found that I would watch all these conversations and try to get a feeling for, okay, what is it that makes the difference between a really good speaker, a really fluent English speaker, and a non-fluent one? And it's not just speed, but it has to do with the amount of interactivity going on, as far as I can tell. So, um, I thought, gosh, okay, how can we incorporate these really cool phrases into language instruction. Sure, I mean, it would be easy, I think, for us to say, please say, oh, really, in the next conversation. Okay, yeah, that one is kind of easy. But I think that, I think that conversation strategy instruction ought to be at the forefront of instruction in the language classroom and not just on the periphery. Because when it's just on the periphery, if it's just, oh, um, by the way, saying stuff like that, well, maybe students will say it one time. But once you make it one of the major points of your communication classroom, then people are going to really, really practice it, internalize it. All right? So, generally speaking, let's talk about conversation strategy.